not being able to vote and participate in a democratic society, emotionally it makes me feel like a ghost, like I don't exist. I work, I pay taxes, I do all the things that everybody else do, but when it comes down to voting, I can't voice my opinion about anything that really matters. I paid my debts to society, so why can't I have my rights back to vote? Six million people in the United States cannot vote because of a felony conviction. Mostly, they live in 12 states that can take away your voting rights forever. One of the most aggressive is Alabama. Almost 250,000 people have been caught in the net. The estimates suggest uh, that uh, nearly 30% of the black male population could be barred from voting because of these uh, criminal histories, these criminal convictions. The Campaign Legal Center decided that a lawsuit was the only way to solve this problem. Good morning. Tim Lanier is one of the people whose voting rights we're fighting for. This is my mother. Be back at what time? Um, 8.30. Thank okay. you. Tim is a guy who wakes up at 5 in the morning to volunteer at the local food bank. I help unload trucks, I carry food to different places, you know, whatever they need. Everybody need help sometime. Half of my jobs I did in the military didn't, didn't cross over to the jobs in the uh, civilian world. So, you know, that was, that was a problem for me. So I made some bad choices. He ended up being convicted of armed robbery and served 18 years in prison. And after 18 years, years in which he went from being a young person to a man, the state of Alabama has seen fit for him to come back to the community. They encourage him to engage in all of this activity that shows that he's a good, upstanding member of society while on probation, and yet he's unable to vote regardless of anything that I've done right in my life, that one day that this happened has ruined the rest of my life as far as being a natural citizen of the United States. You know, because you're not a citizen if you can't vote. Felon disenfranchisement has a long history. At the end of the Civil War, if black people would now have the right to vote, the whole balance of political power was going to change. In states like Alabama, they began creating new laws that would guarantee that black people could not vote. One of the strategies was a law that said, if you've been convicted of any kind of crime, you are permanently barred from voting. Lots of black people were convicted of made-up crimes, being out after dark, being in groups of 10 people, getting a job without their former plantation owner's permission. So that black people couldn't vote. Well, it ain't no harm to keep you In the 1950s and 60s, you see the emergence of the civil rights leaders. I come to ask you to go all out to get every Negro in this county registered to vote. Ministers and ordinary people saying, it's time for us to fight for our rights. And in places like Birmingham, that fight was uh, painful. When I was growing up in Birmingham, Alabama, we had a demonstration on Fifth Avenue South downtown for voting. The police were trying to intimidate protesters and marchers. They were attacked by dogs. The fire department holds the demonstrators down. Police were giving everybody the signal to attack. And that's what they did.
That's all the world it wasn't right. When the Voting Rights Act was passed in 1965, there was great hope. Their cause must be our cause too. Because it's not just Negroes, but really it's all of us who must overcome the crippling legacy of bigotry and injustice. And we shall overcome. But in many ways, it wasn't the victory we thought it was. Constance Todd is 71 years old. She's always been registered to vote. Um, ever since she turned 18. So in 2016, she received a letter from the County Board of Registrars that said they'd look back into her record and she had a conviction, a criminal conviction for a fraudulent check and a theft crime over 20 years ago. Well, my marriage had just broke up. He took all the money out the bank and I could not see my kids go without. And I wrote a series of bad checks. I did this, but I paid for it. I paid restitution, I paid time. Ms. Todd never had any conviction ever since then. For the next 20 years, she had absolutely no problems with the law. Um, she's been an upstanding member of society, working, volunteering, voting. It was devastating to find out that Someone can just come and take my rights to vote. If I do something, I paid for it. So why give, what gives you the right to take my rights to vote? They're going to penalize me again. I am so delighted to bring to you a young man that's on a mission for God. He's doing extraordinary things. Help me introduce this man of God, pastor, founder of the Ordinary People Society, Dr. Kenneth Glasgow. I went to prison for drug charges. I did 14 years. When I got out, you know, one of the first things I wanted to do was go vote be part of the society. And they told me I couldn't vote, man. And I got mad, I got so angry, so I could start expressing myself on, on how we need to get these voters' rights. The only thing that declares you a citizen in the United States of America, your birth certificate says you a citizen, but you don't have full citizenship unless you got that right to vote. If we can recall when Martin Luther King them did it and got voting rights act and civil rights act now. Come on, come on, come on now. It wasn't no politicians. Then in 2017, Alabama took a small step forward. A new Alabama law may allow more formerly incarcerated the right to vote. The Alabama Constitution says people convicted cannot vote, but lawmakers have disagreed on what those crimes are. The new list defines what crimes will cause someone to lose their right to vote. But the list doesn't make a lot of sense. For example, you could have a single theft crime conviction and lose your right to vote permanently, but you could be convicted of embezzlement or fraud and a number of other white color collar crimes and you don't lose your right to vote. Well the verdict is in. A Lee County jury has convicted Alabama House Speaker Mike Hubbard in his felony ethics case removing Hubbard from office. Hubbard was convicted on charges related to using his public position for personal gain. Mike Hubbard will now spend four years in prison. He will also spend eight years on probation and pay a substantial Mike fine. Mike Hubbard, who's been convicted of misappropriating public funds, retains the right to vote, 
but somebody else who steals a TV will lose their right to vote permanently. I was working at um, Cash Connection, a store where they do pay the advances and sell money orders. I've never been in trouble with the police or anything until this incident occurred. Uh, in 2005, she got in the only legal trouble she's ever been in in her entire life. She had a single count of a theft crime that she was convicted of. I called and confessed to a supervisor out of Birmingham because I confessed to what happened. I didn't go to jail. The only reason that Treva Thompson, our named plaintiff, can't vote is because she doesn't have the money to buy her right to vote back. I need to pay about $44,000. I'm going to pay back my restitution. I'm trying and willing. Now that I'm working and I'm making $10 an hour, if I was to pay $50 a month, it's going to take me 73 years to pay off my restitution and to get my voting rights. I will never be able to vote. Never. and I don't think that's right. The rules that require individuals to pay back their fines and fees are nothing more than a modern day poll tax. Before her conviction, she voted regularly in Alabama. Um, she considered that a really important part of her civic life and civic duties. I have grandkids, I have nieces, I have nephews. I know my vote is not the only vote, but I should have the opportunity to voice my opinion and to speak out for them. The work that was done in the 1950s and 60s uh, was a huge step forward, but we didn't cross the finish line. There's still work that has to be done. How you doing, my brother? You all right? Everything. No one ever registered you to vote? No, sir. Okay, let's get your rights back right here. So in this neighborhood, it's poor and the poverty stricken, and these are the people that uh, are mostly looked over. 14 days and two weeks, you don't get nothing from them? You come around there to that plaza, you know where my plaza at, and you come in Glasgow, I ain't heard nothing. Cause I'm dating it for the day. You got me? Yeah, thank you. All right, then. Thank y'all. Hey, I'm glad right. I came outside. Thank y'all, too. All right, man, hey, we man. get your rights back. Sound for it to end. And we shall not stop fighting until we win. <laughs>